And we're back with some more oxygen not included. And the votes are in. It seems we are going to be taking a holodeck rocket into space. We, we, we want to see just how much stupi stupidity we can cram into a, well, burnt out melted rocket shell. However, there is a, a few things we need to do before we go into space. Uh, the first is we need to pick an, a rocket engine type. And we can't really go nuclear. Normally I would have went nuclear, but we don't have any bees. And without those nuclear bees to do it, we can't really go with the nuclear engines. Then that leaves us with either petroleum, steam, sugar, or carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide's too short, sugar's too short, steam is 10 tiles. Small petroleum's okay, but large petroleum just seems like the best. I would prefer to do a petroleum engine. Um, so I'm thinking we're probably going to do a petroleum boiler real quick. I mean, it's not so hard to put together a petroleum boiler. Oh, and I uh, skipped forward time a bit while we swept the place. Uh, you might notice that most of the map has been swept up because uh, I just thought a nice clean map would make things just a little bit faster, and it's definitely helping the frames. Oh, and one other thing we need to do. We need to scout. And, oh, here comes a meteor shower. Ah. Tell me what the new meteor showers look like. I wonder if they only targeted us or if they hit other planets as well and, like, hmm. You'll notice that all of this sweeping has left the top of the map a little bit confused with dirt and regolith and stuff like that. We're going to have to deal with that later. Ooh, and there's some slime. But first up, we need to get a telescope up and running. Now, normally what you do is you'd put a telescope up here, you'd have some doors, you'd have the doors open when there's no meteor showers, close when there is meteor showers. Like, no, 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 way too complicated. We're playing easy mode, remember? This is just a casual playthrough, so we're not going to do anything too crazy. So instead, what we're going to do is we're going to build a rocket down here. What we're going to do with this spacefare module is use this to explore the stars. Yes, it should in theory, work. Unless they've changed a bunch of stuff while I haven't been looking, which could have happened. Anyway, we are going to deconstruct that rocket control station. That is going to be in the way. And then we're going to go into rocketry and we're going to want an enclosed telescope. Normally these are the ones you use in space, uh, or on the ground, and the telescope here is what you're supposed to normally use in space. But this one, we're just going to stick right there. Remember, this is meant to be used on the surface of a planet. You can use it inside one of these, but uh, basically it sees, there's a sort of a, a view distance out of this, and I think it's three tiles to the right, and, or is it four tiles to the right? Eh, three or four tiles to the right, and three or four tiles to the left. That means this view distance actually passes through this wall, allowing it to see some of space. So now all we need to do is give this thing power and give it oxygen, which should be fairly handy. There is a power wire right here, which we can, oh, wait a minute. Yeah, we'll have to put on a, some sort of weird power plug thing. There, chucked a battery on top. That just about squeezed in, thankfully. Uh, then we're running power over from there. For the oxygen supply this thing is going to require, we're running a gas pipe from here into there. Oh, and we'll have to do a little bit of laddering. Oh god, this is going to be awkward. I maybe should have done this first. And then we'll grab power. Power is done. And ventilation, I actually made a mistake. The ventilation's down here. There we go. We've got oxygen flowing in, we have power flowing in. Allow meteor shower identification, sure, why not? And there we go. We can now scout space from underground. Because, of course we can. Uh, anyone want to... Time to collision. It's a slime meteor, 50% algae, 25 phosphoric, phosphoric meteor? Huh. Interesting. Uh, can we Can we target that? Anyone? Anyone want to? Like, I'd prefer to see a little bit more information on that before it smashes into us. Well, it looks like they're not scanning the slimy meteor shower, but that's fine. We're going to see what these uh, surrounding pieces are, and judging by the lines, we should be able to see that, that, and that. And hopefully one of them is one we want to go to. Uh, we're going to let that continue along a pace. While that is happening, we're going to start a few things. One, we're going to start melting out this rocket. Now, to do this, we're going to do it much faster and more efficiently than was last time done. There was a, a few helpful suggestions in the comments on how we should do that. Oh, and there's that meteor shower. Yeah, you're, you're not going to be doing much, buddy. To... Never mind. We'll ignore that one. Down here, we're just about ready to start the melt rockets plan. In here, you see we've got a little vacuum sealed liquid lock with a couple of blobs just to make sure no heat can get out. And this area is toasty, toasty, toasty hot. It's a sort of lump of boiling hot obsidian and igneous rock that's in here. Oh, and this is our storage location. I was trying to sweep up all the igneous rock and all the obsidian, but uh, never mind. That was a plan that didn't go so well. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to break in here and let's break in about that far. Hmm. Now we just need... Oh, actually, wait. There should be fine. 
Now we just need a liquid pump and some depleted uranium. You see, what we want to do is heat up the rocket really quickly without having to spend so much time as we did last time. So give me a utility here, give me a temperature shift plate, and we are going to go with depleted uranium. High thermal conductivity, slow heating, exit radiation absorption. Well, that is wonderful. And we're going to put that temperature shift plate, that's 800 kilos of depleted uranium, right there. And it's immediately going to melt. And let's have a quick look at depleted uranium. Depleted uranium is a very interesting metal. It turns into a liquid at 132.9 degrees centigrade, which is incredibly low. And it doesn't turn into a gas until 4,131 4, degrees. That's better than steel. So it melts at a lower temperature, turns into a gas at a higher temperature, and has higher thermal conductivity. This stuff is just all around better than liquid steel. I probably should have figured that out. Now, getting your hands on it, though, can be a little trickier. Now, there's a few ways to get your hands on it. Basically, the uranium centrifuge is one way to get your hands on it. And radiation lamps, which we have been using a bunch of. So, radiation lamps and... Oh, and manual rad bolt generators, whatever. But that means we've got more than enough to... Oh, why is that there? Someone sweep that out. Don't leave that lying around. And this should immediately just melt. Oh, and while this is going on... And let's go back to... No, not this one. Yeah, this one. What we want to do here is we want to set this up as sweep only. We're going to set this to priority level 9. And then we're going to only put in a few raw minerals here. Namely, we're looking at obsidian and igneous rock. So any swept obsidian or igneous rock will get dumped in here. In all of those beautiful containers right there. Then once this melts, we're probably going to dig across here and grab ourselves a bunch of boiling hot obsidian and igneous rock. There, it's melted, and its temperature is going to go up quite nicely. We're going to wait until that's well hot. If we put a liquid pump in there, it will break. However, we should it'll take long enough that we should be able to pump it all out and dump it into that liquid reservoir over there. Through that insulated pipe, of course, and into a tank that's on top of an insulated pipe, or an insulated tail, so that should be not the worst. Now, let's grab some of this and start our preheating routine. You can go, you can go, and you can go. All of you is going to get swept up into the rocket, and I'm hoping some of that thermal mass will help. Heat it up for us in advance. Ooh, 300 degrees. Looking good. You know what? Let's speed along that temperature, shall we? Uh, give me diamond. Diamond is always good for this stuff. There we go. Much faster. It's ripping the temperature out of there. I want this uranium and liquid as hot as possible, so we have to spend as little time as possible bringing it up to speed. God, it's ripping the temperature out of there. Hey, all of you, you need to get swept up. However, I'm going to wait a little bit. The problem is... Well, our duplicates are going to drop a bunch of it. You just know they are. And let's put down a few... In fact, let's insulate a tile this entire section. I don't want them dropping any of that anywhere where it might cause problems. We will have issues if they drop it down here. That's... Oh, yeah, it's going to land on something and melt something, probably. Give us that one more tile. Oh, great. There's... Yeah, that's there. Never mind. We're going to try and get that out of here and up to the section without any of it getting dropped out of the bottom. Some of it will get dropped. It will cause problems, but that's the price you pay for having narcoleptic dupes. Please no one do anything stupid or uh, don't do anything more stupid than normal. Okay, here comes everyone now. Just don't fall asleep. Bring it all the way up to the top. Don't decide to take a nap. There's too many of them to keep track of. Yep, yep, that seems grand. That seems grand. I don't think they dropped any. Huh. Perfect, let's just check the bottom of the map. I was really expecting that not to go so well. Uh, yeah, give me a sweep level three. Okay then, this stuff is already up to 700 degrees. That's a good start. And our shuttle is looking pretty decent. And what we can do is we can drop this all on the ground. Done. It's no longer being swept, and now it's going to dump its temperature right into the rocket wall. Since it's all made of steel, it should slowly spread around, and this thing should just get warmer and warmer. It'll take a few minutes, because it at least preheats it, pre it a wee bit. Then what we're going to want to do is pump this into that tank, and then from there, we're going to want to pump it up to a metal refinery. I think we'll put the metal refinery down here somewhere. There! Pretty straightforward. We're going to put the metal refinery outside this time, because I learned my lesson from the last time. Uh, this is going to rotate boiling hot liquid up here that's going to go in this tile and then it's going to come out in here rotate through this section and we're going to start melting the roof first this way we can catch the molten steel let's actually just get some airflow tiles in there uh, make them out of steel to be super safe is something like 
that. We're unlikely to melt the two tiles either side of it, but I would prefer to be careful about this. Oh, and we'll sweep up the mess in a minute. For now, I've spread out the obsidian, so it's going to dump in the temperature just that little bit faster. This place has already gone up to 100 degrees in a lot of places. Ah, perfect. Now, if we can get this to above 130 degrees up here, that means we can just start pumping the liquid through no problems and not have to worry about it solidifying in the pipes. It saves us a whole bunch of time. And you guys sweep up all the junk that is not boiling hot, but hot obsidian. Wow, this place is... Is almost ready. This is really, really, really quick. Hey, why are you transferring heat so slowly? Somehow the heat is transferring far faster on the right-hand side than the left. I think it's to do with this door. I think it's not a great conductor. Whereas this side is just way better. Oh yeah, definitely. Hmm. Yeah, we're gonna melt it all. I wonder what'll happen though if we melt this tile. This is where dupes enter and exit. We're gonna have to be really careful about that. But I basically want to melt pretty much everything except maybe for a few sections over here so we have somewhere to plug power in and out of the rocket. While we're waiting for all of this to come up to operating temperature, which actually it's already there, we're going to build an insulated pipe all the way from down here. Now there was uh, suggestions to maybe take magma and dump that into the shuttle cast to help. It's just the magma's all the way down here and having to dig that out and then transfer it all the way up with narcoleptic dupes. I'm just imagining them dropping, you know, 1800 kilos of boiling hot magma into this. So we'd have to seal off this entire tank to make sure that wouldn't happen. Or we could come from this side, but then we still got to worry about this ladder segment. There was a lot of, no, that was a bad idea. Dropping a little bit of uh, boiling hot stuff down here, less of an issue. I'm less worried about that. That, you know, it's going to cause some annoyance, but not huge catastrophic damage. But dropping that stuff into huge amounts of oil, no. Uh, it's also one of the reasons we put all the obsidian temperature shift plates here. Basically, we spent all of our, our, our obsidian so that any of the obsidian we tried to move from here would only go to the rocket and couldn't go anywhere else. Uh, the igneous rock, well, we couldn't do much about it. I, these are all igneous rock containers, and we still had more left over. There's just too much igneous rock on the map. Yeah, but this liquid is just about ready to go. Let's stick in a pump. And for this, we're going to use steel. It will overheat immediately because this stuff is 850 degrees however we're just going to turn off repair and before it breaks we should be able to pump out all 800 kilos of this stuff and so long as we can get it into that liquid reservoir we can then just pipe it all the way up to the top are people looking on that piping run oh my god they're so fast <laughs> they're a very well trained team oh i still haven't named them have i all right here we go jonas why are you doing this you're not even a builder you're a farmer is there no crops that need cropping Okay then, so done. And you, we're going to disable auto repair on you. We don't want anyone repairing you because you're instantly going to overheat. However, it doesn't make a difference. You're definitely going to get all this liquid out. And that liquid is at a balmy 800 degrees. Now this stuff should not be confused. This depleted uranium should not be confused with nuclear waste. Uh, this is nuclear waste. And nuclear waste has turns into gas at... 526 degrees. So nuclear waste is no good for this. You want depleted uranium. Uh, only way to get your hands on depleted uranium is through the things we mentioned already, which is the uranium centrifuge, the manual radbolt generator, and those things we've been using, those rad lights. Ah, these things. Those radbolt lamps we've been using to try and generate uh, crop seeds. And done. Okay, that's gotten rid of all of that. We can deconstruct you. We can take the temperature shift blade back. And we have detected new planetoids. Right. Let's see what type of planetoids. We've got a sandy ore field, which that's really no use to a sandstone, sand, algae, copper. Not really feeling it. Annihilated satellite. It's got an artifact. Great. And finally, we have a planet. Smira. Smira. Uh, whatever. Okay, we've got gold meter showers, iron meter showers, marsh, tundra, space, radio. Bees. They've got the bees. Okay, 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 we definitely have to go there. Oh, they've got a rust biome as well. I would like to get my hand on some of those. Ooh, and they've got a forest so we can get trees and pips. Yes, we need to go here. That's only two tiles away. Ah, we don't even need a petroleum rocket to get there, do we? We could get there on a... No, no, I've already committed to the petroleum rocket. I'm not going back on that. Plus, we need to make a petroleum boiler at some point. We might as well do it now, and then we'll have all the petroleum we'll ever need for our rocket. Uh, take that out of there. Someone want to finish deconstructing that liquid pump? Done. And take that steel and put it into the pile. Exit. And how much of this did we get? 800 kilos of depleted uranium, all heated up to 813 degrees. That is perfection. Then we'll grab ourselves an insulated liquid pipe. And we'll finish that connection off. That should go up here, across, and get dumped into our metal refinery. Easy peasy. Easy peasy.
Yeah, once that's done and dusted, we can get around to me melting the inside of this rocket. And it should already be nicely heated up because of all of that obsidian that we've checked in there. 300 degrees there, we're looking at 240 degrees. Perfect, we can just dump this stuff around, 10 kilo packets, we don't have to do any temperature management or anything like that. It'll just go straight through here and melt this down. Once we've melted the top off this, that means we can get at the top, probably wall this in. And what I want to try to do is try and get out the outside and then melt this whole thing and collect all the steel at the bottom. In fact, I was kind of tempted to try and melt the rocket windows. A uh, little bit of a problem with them. They don't melt until 3926.9C. Nothing can hold that temperature. The best pipes we've got would be radiant tungsten pipes, which melt at 3421. So we literally don't have pipes that can survive to that temperature. We need to get our hands, I think, on insulated piping or insulation to make insulated piping out of insulation. That's the only thing that could probably survive temperatures that high. And even then, I'm not sure. I'd have to look it up. I don't think we can melt the windows. I think we're stuck with them. And here we go. Hey, we have got... 928 degree uranium going in there. Easy P. Oh, wrong one. Should pop right in here. Temperature wise, how's that looking? That's actually a 20C. Okay. The insulated pipe is stupidly hot. Yeah, there's something to do with pipes coming through this. No matter what we do with the pipes, they will exchange heat with the liquid passing through them when they're going through the, the inputs and outputs. So you have to make them out of insulated pipes made of tungsten so that they don't melt. Can't use ceramic or the ceramic will melt. Uh, I need to extend that on a bit to cover more ground, but yes, that is definitely working. 400 degrees already. Uh, might be time to sweep up the obsidian and put it away for a while. I don't think we're going to need it shortly. It's still adding a little bit of temperature, but soon we're not going to need it anymore. And there's the second batch. Ooh, it's going to be so much faster. We're going to stick this on the back burner for now. We'll come back occasionally and queue up some more just to make sure it keeps going, but we're not going to be paid. This is going to become our uh, low attention priority. I did a Tiny little bit of a modification here to make sure it spreads out a little bit more heat or dumps in a little bit more heat. There we go, perfect. This should melt the top of this quite in a reasonable time frame. And while that's going on, we're gonna do make it we'll make a petroleum boiler down here. I was looking around for a good location and I think I found one. This right here is perfect for a heat spike. We can dig a heat spike right down through to about here, and then we'll have a massive heat spike going all the way down to draw heat out into a petroleum boiler we situate here. We're trying to figure out exactly where we position it. We're going to place the petroleum boiler right here. Now, we would have to normally vacuum it out and do all this stuff, but I'm thinking, let's make our lives a little bit simpler. Instead of vacuuming the whole place out, let's just brick it in, and then we can dig out what we need. Uh, just a sh slightly shorter way of doing things. Well, maybe not shorter, but it does make our lives just a little bit more convenient. This is going to be a very dumb way of breaking in. We're just going to have a tiny little blob liquid lock here. And then we're just going to cut our way across. Yeah. That should give us a little ground to actually dig out. Well, we're going to dig down here and we want to make sure everything's in vacuum. If you're ever dealing with magma, vacuum, vacuum all the way. It is the only way. Actually, wait, that's technically a lie. You can do it without vacuum. You just need to like pour a whole ocean on top of it and then you can work with it so long as the ocean's there and, and slowly boiling away. So this is a bit weird in that we're sort of reverse constructing it. We're basically hollowing out the bits we want. Uh, we'll also have to rip out all of the normal blocks and give ourselves a way in and out of here, I think. Oh, actually, wait, that should work. We might need a ladder piece here or there. Uh, we'll have to wait until most of this gets deconstructed and we get some space in. Like, we're going to have to put in ladders in all sorts of places to make sure we can get in and out of where we want to. I really need to remember to sweep these places up. Uh, I just... They kept ending up with debris down here, and I, I, yep, I did it all wrong. Never mind. We'll sweep it up, and then we'll finish this off. That is the core outline of it done. We still have to hook up this heat spike here. We're slowly digging down and diagonally building stuff. You can't... Oh, yeah, in the past, you used to be able to do a mechanized airlock thing where you could build down like this. First door would build, and then you could build the other doors through a closed door, so you could effectively just build a heat spike straight through magma. Yeah, that's been patched out. They caught on to that, unfortunately, so you got to be more careful now about building your heat spike, and you got to place them just a little bit more strategically. This should allow us to get a fairly decent heat spike up and running on it. Oh, we got plenty of surface area for magma, this whole obsidian chunk on the other side. I think this should work out quite nicely. We'll put down a few temperature shift plates down here, and I might even... Hmm. No, I won't make any commitments just yet. Just give me a minute to figure out how exactly we're going to maximize heat draw down here. I'm thinking a quick temperature shift plate right there. It'll help draw heat out of that magma and inject it right in. 
fact, we are going to do a little staggering of them all the way up. We've got plenty of diamond knocking around. We shouldn't have to worry about the magma here running out for thousands of cycles. We're going to be running a counterflow heat exchanger. We'll cover more on that in a minute. But yeah, I don't see this running out of magma in time in the next few thousand cycles. And we're probably going to pump about, oh, I'd say two um, oil wells to it. So about, that's supposed to be about 6.66. .6, so say about six kilos. So we'll do about six kilos per second through this. Ooh, if we're doing 6.6 .6 kilos, we might want to leave a space to fix that uh, pipe. So I'm pretty sure the pipes will start overheating at some point, but we can fix that when the time comes. We actually have all the bits in place. This was... Damn, I think I've made too many petroleum boilers at this point. All right, uh, this is going to be the output pipe for our petroleum. Or for our... Uh, yeah, for our petroleum. This is going to be the input pipe for the crude oil. But I don't want to start it just yet. It's just... There's this volcano over here, and I'm thinking... Well, obsidian has a tiny specific heat capacity compared to magma. It's like 0.2. Magma has a specific heat capacity of 1. If we could, say, rip out this obsidian and let that volcano start pouring in here, it would add an awful lot of, of heat into this section. We don't need to do it, but I kind of want to now that I've thought of it. So if you'll just give me a moment or two, I'm going to sort of see how much of this I can rip out and let all the magma drop. The simple goal here is to try and hollow out as much space as possible without destroying any of the magma. So we're going to try and rip this section out from down here and then let the magma sort of flow in and then hollow out an area so this volcano has something to pour into. Um, I, I'm not sure I can explain this right because I'm not sure exactly what it is I'm trying to do, but I think we can at least make some space for some extra heat to pour down here. I just I hate wasting that volcano right there. Time to see if this plan is going to work. Grumpy Bear is in and Grumpy Bear is not leaving. And Grumpy Bear can dig out Obsidian and it's just the start of their shift. So... Welcome to the party, pal. You're here for the long haul. Right, so dig that out. And then I'm going to want you to dig that out. And we are going to get you to excavate... <laughs> yep. Our wonderful, fantabulous duplicants, lady and ladies and gentlemen. They are just, uh... Yep. They are what they are. Quick, grab those as well. Yeah, we're going to need you to move a bit faster. No, no, no. Oh, damn it. And to do it one at a time and slowly and but surely get this through it done. I'm going to sort of speed up time while I go through this. That went pretty well. There was only some minor scaldings. Uh, we'll send them back home now. I think I, I think their job is done for the day. Off you go, buddy. Yeah. You do that. You deserve it. All right, next we're going to bring in the other digger who's not scalded, and we're going to get them to core out this other area, and I think we're going to have plenty of space here. That worked out better than I thought it would. In fact, I think we can let people back in again. Um... Yeah, we've got most of this place cored out. I think we can just tidy this up and uh, tap into this volcano up here. Oh, it's already erupting. Do you know when things are going so well? Just so well. God damn it, Uzo. Uh, that should be enough. You can hop from there to the next one. Go, go. Go. Mm. We shall make this an emergency priority. Okay, okay. That's definitely obsidian. Definitely an emergency. Seriously, you don't want to build it. Okay, how about if you build uh, that one? Build one there. Come on, seriously? Who, who's queued who's up to it? Gamer43. Why would... You're right beside it. Uh, okay, Zedflix. Where... No. Um, better idea. No one's in it. No one, no one in or out. No one in or out. Cancel. There. You gonna do it? Yes. Go, 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 go. Yeah. Now? Now? Get out of there, you muppet! Go, go, go. <laughs> uh, we've only had two scaldings so far. Moderate wounds. Oh! Walk it off. You'll be fine. Okay, then. Just, just a little bit more. Perfect. Let the magma flow. All right, actually, we should probably maybe speed that along just a tiny scooch. Yeah, that's still taking too long. 
actually maybe step back just a bit. There you go. Perfect. Why do you have to get so close? You know I'm going to just tell you to move over. <sighs> Never mind. All right, once that drains out a bit, we'll see if we can't get someone up there to analyze the volcano. Ooh. Yeah, so that's basically what I want. This is going to keep erupting and it's going to keep filling this up and give us loads of boiling hot magma to tap into. All right, we didn't need it, but it's just, I mean, it looks so much nicer now, right? Volcanoes, annoyingly, uh, yeah, they have a lot of magma sitting around them, which makes them hard to analyze. What I like to do is stick down a bunch of temperature shift plates. Turns all of the, uh, the magma into igneous rock. Then you vacuum up the igneous rock. Uh, done. Done. And deconstruct all the background buildings. And finished. That means our scientist can get up there, analyze the volcano, and hopefully get out of there before the time thing erupts. And that's that. Oh, and maybe get rid of that as well. And we'll probably wall it up on this side to force it all out the other. Uh, and maybe do a little bit of that to give it a bit more flow, flow room. And we are ready to kick this off. Well, I mean, we probably could have kicked this off already, but I... I really, really wanted to get that done. All right, over here we've got six kgs a second of oil about to come in. That's being pumped from all the way over here. And if we check the power on that, yep, we're going to connect that power there. What this means is this power wire is going to be pumping the oil here, while simultaneously it's also going to be providing the power to the door and to this liquid pump. So... With the oil flowing, okay, there's a big blob at the start, but it should be l flow control to six kilos per second. That is beautiful. Nice. And ooh, get rid of some of this. We don't need that piping. We're going to store the petroleum for now, but first off, we've got to start filling this thing. I did a, a bunch of research on petroleum boilers. I wanted to see if there's been any major breakthroughs in the field, and as far as I can tell, it's still counterflow heat exchanger boilers. They haven't really changed that much. They're pretty solid, this design, it seems. All right, uh, we need to wait until this gets up to the thermal sensor. Currently, the thermal sensor is in vacuum, uh, so it's minus 273 degrees Celsius, or zero degrees Kelvin, absolute zero, basically. So until it's actually in a transfer medium, it's going to just give that signal. So what we want to do is have this for, I think it's 403. Yes, that's the one. Uh, so if the temperature of the crude oil is, whatever, above 403, then that'll kick, kick close the door. We'll actually have to set this to above, but... This is sort of the annoying part. We have to wait here until this fills up. So crude oil will split into a second tile once it's about 850, or maybe it's 860 kilos. So I think what we're going to do right now is we are going to cut off the input. Now there's still a bunch of oil in the pipe that's going to flow in, but it shouldn't get too big or too out of control. It's just we, when this converts, oh, I should probably cover that. This is a, what you call a an oil boiler. And oil is a bit of a weird thing in this game. Several things are, have uh, similar things to it, but basically if you boil oil all the way up to 399.9 degrees, it will just transmute into petroleum. 100% conversion ratio. That means you can turn 100 kilos of crude into 100 kilos of petroleum. If you try to run it through, say, a petroleum boiler over here, you're going to get out half. So you put in 10 kilos of... Uh, ah, 10 kilos of crude oil, you get out 5 kilos of petroleum. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to feather this a bit. And what this is doing is that's closing that airlock. And airlocks, bizarrely enough, I was looking back on this. There was a time we didn't know they, they were useful for this, but they allow you to do temperature injection by basically allowing you to turn things on and off. In a vacuum, this thing does nothing when it's open. And once it's closed, though, the temperature is going to fly from this section to the other. So if we set that up, we're going to watch here, and boom, the temperature just starts to rocket up, which is injecting heat heat rapidly into the crude oil over here. And once that stuff is going to get close to 400 degrees, we're going to cut back a bit. I'm just worried that this stuff is going to bubble up like crazy once it gets to um, 400 degrees. I'm a, wow, you're a bit slow pulling the heat out of there. Considering these are all diamond window tiles with temperature shift plates in the middle of them, I was expecting a little bit more oomph, if you know what I mean. Okay, that's getting pretty close. We'll just sit below for a minute. And no, a little bit more. Okay, and there's still a little bit of crude oil there. Okay, much better. So, temperature, current ambient temperature is 101. We want that to be about 403, though. Nope. Above, please. There you go. Okay, okay. That was a little bit awkward. Some sort of weird bubble appeared there, and it basically left the temperature sensor out in the cold, so to speak. I wasn't able to tell what the temperature was. Now we'll just start this up again, and that should be it. 
From now on, as that crude oil dips in, that crude oil is going to drive down the temperature. Once the temperature goes lower, the thermal sensor will kick in. Uh, let's just give this a minute to spin up. Here it comes. And as you can see, every time this uh, goes a little bit too high, temperature sensor kicks in. Texit goes below 403, door closes, heat gets injected. That's why you just call these steel airlocks uh, a heat injector. Oh, and I know it's not touching the diamond window tile, but that's because we have this temperature shift plate right there dumping the heat in. In fact, we should probably, we could put a diamond window tile there, but I don't think it's actually necessary. Eh. Seems to be working just fine. All right. This whole counterflow heat exchanger is, oh, how do I explain this? My brain is not being very helpful at this uh, description. I've tried a couple of times now. I can't, uh, efficiency. That's what it is. That is the definition of a heat exchanger. It's uh, efficiency. Basically, we've had to brute force this petroleum from about 90 degrees, I think. It's coming in at 86.3 degrees. We then have to heat that thing the whole way up to 403 degrees. That means we're dumping in an awful lot of heat from down here. The problem is, well, yes, there is an awful lot of heat down here. You're going to quickly burn through it if you're heating up the, the petroleum that much. As well as that, the petroleum's coming at it 400 degrees. Do you really want 400 degree petroleum around your base? Actually, some people might. It, yeah, you know what? Doesn't matter. Um, oh, and we should... I just realized the lead that ended up in here is starting to melt. That's going to cause fierce problems. Uh, just, just mop that up. Hey, right. so... The uh, petroleum here basically flows out, it fills this up, and then once it gets to the top, it overflows. And as it overflows, it flows down these stairs, and until it eventually gets to here. And while it's flowing down there, that 400 degree stuff is counterflowing past all of the crude oil that's coming in. So the crude oil, crude oil comes in, flows past the outgoing petroleum, and the two of them just start swapping temperature. The longer you make this stairs, the more perfect the temperature exchange. Now, if you had, say, two identical li liquids, say petroleum versus petroleum, and one was leaving at 500 degrees and one was coming in at 100 degrees, then by the time it's finished, the stuff going out should be about 104, 105 degrees. And the stuff that was coming in should be almost up to 500. It's just the way it works. So if we check this crude oil, it, it, even now you see it's 85.6 coming in. And by the time it gets to the top, it's 300, 380 degrees. That means we only have to give it just a tiny little scooch of heat, just a tiny feathering of it. And it turns into petroleum, saving us a whole bunch of heat, making this whole thing more efficient. Turns out these are a lot in... Uh, Oh, refrigeration and things like that, or I don't know, there's a bunch of businesses or a bunch of uh, mechanical things that use them. All right. Um, I think we're going to make a few changes here, though. This is, there's just a little bit too much heat down here for this, for a heat exchanger this efficient. These aluminum things are, uh, aluminum pipes have really good thermal conductivity, which means this thing's probably going to break. You can see it there. Oh, it's 401, 402. Actually, let's give this a minute, but I'm pretty sure... That a few of these tiles are going to have to be replaced with insulated ones or we're going to have problems. Oh, yep, there we go. Radiant pipe just took a little bit of damage. We shall disable auto repair on you. We don't want anyone coming along to repair that. Instead, we're going to replace you with some insulated piping. Doesn't really matter what we use. Granite, sedimentary, really doesn't matter. But we'll go with igneous here for those two. Yeah, it's starting to pop again. It's okay. It's okay. We got this. Uh, dupes. Anyone want to show up before the, the whole thing starts breaking and backing up? Um, no, they'll make it, right? Zetflix is on the way. Seriously? Lunchtime? Now? Just a... Mm. Okay, perfect, perfect. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. We'll just grab that stuff and clean up the area a bit. And that's a petroleum boiler done. Now, we might have to also insulate this next pipe as well. You might have to do one to four or five. That's why you leave two tiles here. These two tiles just mean you can come in and service this thing quite handily. Some people are very paranoid and they'd like to leave two tiles on each floor. I kind of like to make them... Th this way I found was just the perfect balance. Now, this, this thing is perfect if you're tapping into one of these volcanic biomes. I could also work with a very large magma volcano, like if this is a, a large... Yeah, that's a massive volcano. Smaller volcanoes, you might need something a little bit bigger. Ooh, that reminds me, we are going to need to plug in these oil reservoirs as well. And then we're going to have to start burning off this oil. And to burn off the oil, I think... I think it's time we made our industrial sauna. Hmm. All we have to do, really, is sort of wall in down this side and put in liquid locks on each floor. Well, at least two of the floors. And then it's basically just a case of starting to strip this out and it'll expose the obsidian. We'll have to pump out the gases and maybe stick in a few more steam turbines, but turning this into a, well, a large 
steam sauna room type thing will be pretty handy. And then we can stick in the power generators and everything like that. And yeah, that's going to be... <laughs> It's going to have to be the next episode. The problem is I kind of spent too long down here. I regret nothing, though. That is absolutely beautiful. And that volcano is actually still active. Next dormancy, 19.3 cycles. So we're good. Oh, my God. It's only active half the time. That doesn't matter. That will slowly start filling this up. And I don't think this is going to run out anytime soon. Uh, so next up, I'm thinking, yes, we need to quickly get this industrial zone up and running. Uh, hook up these two oil wells down here so that we can start getting a fresh six kilos per second. We don't want this stuff running out. We've got we've got a little bit of time and a buffer there, so we're not going to be too rushed. But I'm thinking we get the two of those up and running and then we're pretty much stable on all fronts. Oh, maybe throw in a slickster ranch or two. Nope, nope, nope. Don't worry about that tomorrow. Anyway, I'm going to cut this out here. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Good luck.